What's up, everybody? Uh, this is Ken back again with part two of the seven key steps to wholesaling and closing your first or next deal. Um, if you caught the first video uh, that's on our Facebook and on our YouTube channel, you'll know that I went over seven key things that you need to do uh, to get your first deal. Now, these aren't the inclusive seven things. There are other things that you could do. Uh, there's other techniques that you can follow. Uh, but these are the seven things that Bunny and I have found to be uh, instrumental in helping us with our success as wholesalers and just uh, with all kinds of uh, wealth generating uh, procedures. These are the same steps that many of your large companies take when they are researching the town too. So uh, definitely stick, stick with me uh, during this video. Uh, because today we're going to be talking about step number one, which is picking your market, right? Um, for anybody who's new to wholesaling, you may understand that that can be one of the hardest things is, is determining what area, what city, and then what part of a city you want to invest in. Now, for Bunny and I, uh, we do, for our local wholesaling, we do the Nashville area. We do the Middle Tennessee area. That's anywhere from... Um, the Clarksville, Tennessee area, uh, including some parts of lower Kentucky, southern Kentucky, uh, all the way down to Chattanooga uh, and some, sometimes Memphis as well. Uh, so that's our local market. Those are the areas that we can get out to. We can, you know, actually put hands on buildings if we want to. But we also virtually wholesale in those markets, too. Not every property requires us to get out there and actually see it. Not every property requires us to actually get out and have to meet. Uh, the seller in person so when possible we like to do our deals without having to go and touch them I like to do deals without having to even leave from the house from this little device here or from my, my computer uh, and I'm going to show you some of the, the steps that we use to do that um, so again uh, if you look at here at my computer screen you'll see that I got up some good little information over here on the right side I'm going to take you guys through uh, what I'm looking at and then over here I have my tips you know just the stuff that I uh, I wanted to go over with you guys for this video in particular now I do recommend that uh, you either watch this video more than once if you need to or uh, throughout the video take a screenshot and save this for your personal records that way you know uh, what steps you need to do when you're looking to find your either first market or your next market so before I get into this, uh, I do want to, you know, give you guys a little background. So with this one, with this research, this is not me making like a video just to kind of show you guys how to do it. This is a video of me actually going through and looking at an area that I'm looking at personally. Uh, and I'm looking at this area for two reasons. So back in May, I started an investment group with uh, my, it includes myself and nine other uh, highly motivated individuals, uh, some that I know from the Marine Corps and then some associates that I've met through them. Uh, and we've been investing every month. Uh, we've been uh, pooling our money together and we're finally at a point where we're looking to pull the trigger on several different things. Some crypto stuff. Uh, we're looking to do some um, we're looking to do some crypto investing. We're looking to do uh, buy some real estate and any kind of anything else that we can kind of dibble and dabble in to build wealth, you know, build generational wealth um, and to just build our company. So what I'm doing here is we, we had our, our uh, monthly meeting uh, on Sunday. And one of the things that we talked about was how do we find our first market that we want to invest in? We're all over the country. So. None of us are really centralized to the area. Again, like I said, some of them are military, so they're all over the place. Uh, you know, they never know when they're going to move. So we really needed to try to, like, figure out what area we want to invest in. And I, since that's something that I already do, I wanted to, you know, just take the time to kind of look at a couple of cities. So one of the cities that we came up with was, or one of the states we came up with, with was South Carolina because it was kind of neutral to where a lot of us are located at right now. Um, so we felt like that little area, like Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, uh, Florida would be a good area for us to kind of start and, you know, kind of get our feet wet with the whole investing idea. Uh, so that's where we're going to start at. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take you guys through 
my research to see if uh, Columbia, South Carolina is a good city for us to start investing in. Now, that's the city that we kind of came up with for a few reasons, right? Columbia, South Carolina is a military town. Uh, it's a college town. And um, the price points on, on properties in that area aren't ridiculous. Like here in the Nashville market, we would have to have, you know, a lot of capital to really get in our foot in the door on something that wouldn't require as much work, uh, which is what we need in our right now because, you know, none of us are local to the area. So we want something that won't take too much work. We don't want a full rehab. We don't want to have to, uh, you know, tear down the studs and rebuild it. You know, we don't mind doing some cosmetic stuff and maybe replacing some floors, you know, even knocking a wall down wouldn't be bad, but we don't want a tear down. So I'm going to take some time to go through and just kind of determine what side of town we want to look in, maybe even pull a list uh, while you guys are watching. Uh, so I'm going to kind of walk you through it. Uh, I, I really didn't plan out this portion of the video. Originally, I was just going to kind of go through these steps, but I figured that to give you guys the most value, it would be better to just show you guys my process. And um, I welcome your feedback. So just stick with me. All right. So again, the first, this is going to be the first step of finding your next market, right? Uh, and as you can see over here, I wrote down a couple of things. And step one, picking your market, you know, and definitely there are a lot of things that you want to consider, right? Um, I always recommend that you start looking in your local area first, right? Uh, and like I said, we already do that in our local area. I drive for dollars every single day. Uh, like every single day, there's not a day that goes by that we leave from the house. If we don't leave from the house, that's different. But if we leave from the house, we're always driving for dollars. The kids know how to drive for dollars on the computer. Like they have literally driven around Clarksville, Tennessee, and put properties in our driving for dollars list, our virtual driving for dollars list. Uh, and we've called on them and we've gotten traction on, on a lot of them. Uh, we have yet to close one from what the kids have gone through. But that's part of that follow-up process that we'll talk, o talk about in a later video. Uh, to give you guys some perspective on that. But, you know, you want to make sure that you're looking in an area that's not too big uh, and not too small. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, no, don't avoid big areas. Like, don't avoid Nashville, Tennessee. You know, Nashville has a lot of suburbs. They have, you got Antioch, you got Bell Mead, you got uh, North Nashville. You know, so the same is true for pretty much any city you go into. You know, if you go into Dallas, Texas, there's all these different little uh, sub subgroups in that city that you could definitely find some uh, promising deals, some promising real estate. And there's always real estate to be found. You know, despite what anybody say right now that the market is oversaturated, it's a lie. There's real estate out there. There's deals out there. They're still there. It's just a matter of whether or not you're willing to put the work in to get to them, right? So that's one, you know, figuring out if you're going to do local, if you're going to do virtual, you're going to do a combination of the two. Like for us with South Carolina, we're looking for a personal, I'm looking for a personal property for my group to invest in. But in doing so, I'm going to find properties that I'm going to hand off to other wholesalers. Uh, so best believe that I'm going to do some wholesale deals while we're out there, because why not? Why would I pull a list of, you know, a couple of hundred properties and not? plan to make some additional money on them by wholesaling them the way that we do anywhere else, right? So that brings me to number two, which is what is your goal? So for me right now, my goal is two and uh, A and B here, right? I want to, we, we're looking to either flip or buy and hold. So I guess any of these. So we're looking to either flip or buy and hold something uh, for my investment group. But I'm also looking for wholesale deals, right? I'm looking for properties. Uh, so I'm going to find buyers out there because as I come across property, if it don't work for us, it'll work for somebody else. Um, some things to consider. Uh, these are kind of some high level items, but these are items that you want to be thinking about. And, and the reason why you want to be thinking about uh, both two and three over here, because uh, two is not just your goals, is what, what are your end buyers go too? Because every property is not meant to be a flip property. Every neighborhood is not a flip neighborhood. Uh, every neighborhood is not a neighborhood that you want to buy and hold in either. You know, some are rental neighborhoods. Some are first time home buyer type neighborhoods. Sometimes they do have a blend, but you kind of want to know what you're looking for. Uh, so that brings us to, you know, some things to consider. Now, crime rate, I put this, this is in no particular order, right? So you got crime rate. Property crime, violent crimes, uh, you can go to citydata.com, local police website. So what I've done is I did go and search. 
Let's see. I already searched up. Well, I guess it deleted this. So let's see. Uh, let's go to cdata.com. And let's see what the crime rate is for uh, Columbia, South, South Carolina. I'm going to minimize this a little bit. Got a little bit more room up there. All right, so as you can see right here on citydata.com, it has a lot of information, right? Um, a lot of stuff to go through. So let's just kind of hit at it. You know, the population of 2019 was uh, 131,000. That's kind of small. It's not a really big city. You know, I would love for it to be a city that was like 500,000 or more, but that's not bad. 100% urban, which means that they don't consider themselves to have a lot of rural areas, but I'm sure that there are some outlying areas that would be considered more rural that we could look at as well. Uh, median age is 28. Okay, it's a fairly young city. Um, medium income. Okay, this is pretty good. So we know that we're not looking at super expensive houses. I mean, if you if the median income was in the closer to the hundred thousand mark, uh, then I would say that we'd probably be looking at some uh, larger properties. But you know, when you're looking at like around 50,000 uh you're looking at pretty much starter homes you know your, your basic two ones uh with you know 20 less than 2500 square foot typically is what you're kind of looking at medium house prices yeah you see two hundred thousand dollars um in that area so not bad it gives us uh that's not bad right when you're looking at properties to flip medium gross rent 909 I'm not really too happy about that number. 909 is kind of low, uh, but again, I'm in Nashville, so we're kind of spoiled with the rat Nashville rent being, you know, 1500 and up for most most of your smaller properties. So, you know, not excited about 909, but you know, 909 could work as long as we can get into a property at a decent price, and there's still some um, some money to be made on the backside of that. You know, the 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 number one goal is to own an asset. The number two goal for us is to uh, be able to make some passive income. And that's for my investment group. But when it comes down to wholesaling, my main goal is to find properties that I can flip and give over to other investors. So when I'm looking at properties, I want to make sure that, you know, my investors are going to want to, if this 909 is, is about what we're looking at for uh rent then we're looking at around 90 to a hundred thousand dollars on the purchase uh price of the property because you still want to be able to make some money on your on your rental you know two hundred thousand dollars on a purchase you're going to be looking to get close to two thousand dollars on the rental side of that which may or may not work or we have to find a side of town that that does work in so we can make that happen um let's keep on going Keep on going down, predominantly white uh, and black, pretty much. Crime rate, here we go. Crime rate by year. Let's see, let's get closer to our time frame right now. Got a lot of sex offenders. Let's see. Murders, 29, trending up. Robberies, assaults, burglaries. Um, some of these I'm not really too worried about now. R robberies, yes. Burglaries, yes. Because nobody wants to live in an area where they're afraid that they're going to get broken into. So you want to kind of keep that in, in mind. But these numbers aren't horrible when you really consider um, the crime rate in some other, other cities. Um, so one thing that you could do is you could pull up a comparable city and you compare these this crime rate to a, to the crime rate of a city that would be similar size. Um, like you see, uh, the double arrow means the value is much bigger than the state average. So they have a pretty high, pretty high average on, uh, most of their crimes, I guess. Yeah, they got double arrows all the way down with the exception of arson, which arson is something that you do want to look at because that's property crimes. We really care about property crimes, uh, especially considering we're looking to purchase property. Uh, we're looking to be landlords. Not saying that you don't care about murders and, and rapes and stuff like that, but, you know, we really do care about those property crimes uh, because that's what really affects us. 
Let's see. Let's keep on looking down here and see what else they got on city data for us. Here we go. Medium real estate property taxes. Uh, okay. Not really. Don't really care about that right now, to be honest. Um, I like this, the nearest city. So now we can see that we have all of these other cities that we can kind of look at if Columbia doesn't work uh, or if the city of Columbia doesn't work, then we know that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight cities that are within a five mile, within three miles of this city that we can also look at. So when you, you know, if, if we were to click on each one of these cities and see what their information says, what their population is, and we can kind of add that to the population of what we're looking at. So, you know, there's another 10,000 people right here uh, in, what is this? Forest Acres. Um, higher household incomes, just slightly. So now we're getting into that kind of outskirts side of town where, you know, a little bit of the, the home values are going up a little bit. The prop, the population went down. Um, but let's see if the crime rate. Look at uh, well, this probably well actually this could be right so i mean look they have very low crime rate here so now i just determined that maybe forest acres south carolina which is a sub uh a suburb of columbia would be a good area for my group to start looking at um uh, at property so let's see then i'm gonna take this and i'm gonna go over to my prop screen and see what prop screen has to say Let's get into prop screen and see what prop screen has to say about it. Now, if you don't have prop screen, um, if you don't know what prop screen is, this is like uh, the MLS for real estate investors. Uh, if you're not a realtor, uh, speaking of realtors, Vani's inside working on her uh, her training for her realtor's license right now. Uh, but if you're not a realtor, prop screen gives you the ability to see a lot of the information that realtors can see without having access to the MLS. Uh, without being a realtor, you can't get access to the MLS. So this is really a great way to do your market research, uh, if, especially if you can't get in contact with, say, a realtor who can get this information for you. Okay, why are you not popping up? Right, let's see, what's the zip code there? Let's find the zip code to Forest Acres. Uh, bear with me y'all told you i'm taking you through this as i go through it this is the first time i've looked any of these places up so you are seeing what i see as i see it so it's gonna be low and slow but we're gonna get through it and you're gonna learn some stuff i'm gonna learn some stuff we're gonna teach each other some stuff two nine two nine two oh four Boom. Let's go look at Forest Acre. All right, look, we got 1,500 cash buyers, 368 vacant properties in this city. Um, not a whole lot of auctions. That's kind of good. Not a whole lot of bank owned, which isn't bad. You got 14 properties in pre foreclosure. So if you're looking for foreclosure properties, there you go. You got 14 of them right there. Uh, I like to start, you know, again, we're going to go back over. You can go back over here and you can kind of look at my list. You know, I got my, my hit list, you know, my crime rate, population jobs schools and eh, yes and no i care about schools but i don't care about schools now i put this i put schools on there for two reasons schools on there because again we're looking for personal properties we're looking for stuff that we could potentially rent out when you start looking at it from that standpoint you do want to make sure that the schools are okay they ain't got to be great schools because you, there's ways around that and you really can't control the school district as much as you can some other stuff you know uh, jobs is a big thing. If, if there's no jobs, there's no people and people won't stay there. There's no economic growth in the city if there's no jobs. So we want to make sure that there's either a job in the city or that there's a job, there's jobs around the city. Uh, and again, Columbia has a really big military presence. So if nothing else, we know that the base is there and it's going to help sustain the city. Uh, and although bases do close down, it's very rare and it's very rare that they completely shut down. And this is uh, one of their recruit depots, which is where they train a lot of the new soldiers. Uh, we had the privilege of going out here a couple of years ago when my little brother graduated from Army boot camp. Uh, he, um, 
and we got to drive around some of the areas out here and we actually found a lot of subdivisions that we like we just never actually went back and skip traced the area because we already had our areas figured out but we do know that there's a lot of stuff there now growth that's something that we're going to go and look at um, a little bit later home and rent prices we kind of saw a little bit about the home and rent prices like i told you i didn't really care super i wasn't super uh ecstatic with the rent prices that they had on there but we can also go and look at like zillow rentometer.com those will give us a better uh, idea of what some of the rents are we can also go and look at for rent.com and see what what things are renting for in the area uh and you can always reach out and ask a realtor uh realtors if you find a really good realtor that it is um, investor friendly, they'll give you a lot of information and they can kind of, you know, guide you to the perfect side of town uh, for that. Uh, and then general Internet search. That's just kind of what we're doing right now, you know, kind of going through. But what I want to show you over here, like on PropStream, is that PropStream is going to give us more of that down and dirty information, right? So the first thing I like to start with is cash buyers. You know, if, if there's no cash buyers and I'm trying to wholesale in the area, it doesn't do me any good because who am I going to wholesale it to, right? Secondly, if there's no cash buyers in the area, then there's probably not a whole lot of development going on in the area. There's probably not a whole lot of flips going on in the area because that's what your cash buyers are here for. So we got about 1,500 in Forest City. And uh, let's see. I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to maximize this for a second. All right. So I like to go in here and filter out my cash buyers, right? So I want to go and look at, I want no owner occupied because I don't care if some, if the person bought it cash and they live in it because that's a private owner. Um, that's not who we're looking for is our, to be on our cash buyer list. We're looking for none on the occupied. Typically, those are the individuals who bought a property to rent it out or to flip it or something of that sort. You know, the next thing we're going to go look at is property type. Uh, right now, I'm just kind of interested in single family homes. Yeah, I can go look at townhomes and condominiums and all of that other stuff. And I will at some point. But right now, we're just going to stick with the single family homes. Don't want to over, um, over complicate it, really. Not really too worried about lot size or building size right now or years built or any of that stuff. Some people do care about that. I really don't care about that right now. Ownership information, right? I do want to know. Um, I do want to put some. I do want to narrow down my last sale date. So we're going to go from today and let's go back. Let's go within the last two years, right? How many people have bought? In the last two years cash buyers right so let's close this out that brings us to 164 cash buyers right and that's in the last two years let's go let's go back in here and actually narrow this down to the last year let's see what we get for the last year of cash buyers and again keep in mind that this is only forest hill i mean forest acres this is not city of columbia this is the outside uh, one of the outlying cities in the area uh, and right there we got 74 properties that have been bought by cash buyers in the in the last year right so let's click on one of these and see what is what this property look like okay it did a decent flip on it uh, corporate on which doesn't mean anything again if you watch my last video you remember I said that I don't mind going after co corporate ownership because my L my, my my group of investors we are we're an LLC uh, we're gonna purchase in our LLC name uh, so we would be corporate owned so corporate ownership doesn't te technically doesn't mean anything uh, I like that the length of ownership is six months so this property has been recently purchased um, it's currently off market 914 square foot not a huge house but I mean that's probably typical for the area decent sized lot uh, estimated value is about a hundred and six thousand so let's go back over here and see what they paid for it though yeah y'all didn't know that price screen can show you all that did you let's go look at this mortgage let's see what they paid for this bad boy okay so back in March they paid cash thirty three thousand so boom right there thirty three thousand they paid for this I say that they probably put about 
15 into it, you know, bathroom's not nothing amazing, you know, it's a bathroom refresh, I mean, even this little, uh, uh, standalone, um, vanity isn't, you know, it's nothing huge, it's not even any counter space on that thing, um, okay kitchen you know not a lot again not a lot of counter space though uh and it could be the angle could be the the pictures that the way the pictures were taken but you know it's not a huge house it's only 900 square foot right but the thing that i like is that they paid thirty three thousand for this bad boy and the estimated value is already one hundred and six thousand. so that right there alone shows us that this is this this property right here was well worth the the purchase uh for that that investor um you see, we can see who else owned it in the past, what they paid for it, and all of that. Uh, the, a little, another little thing that you may not know about Prospering is that they have this nice little link, properties link. Uh, so we can see right here, these people who just bought this, this corporate owner, let's see what the name is. Uh, single family rental, I assume, S, uh, SFR302 LLC. They own 673 properties. Now, they're all over the place, but I want you to think about it from this standpoint. They own all of these properties. All of them have a occupied occupancy for the most part. There's a few of them that are vacant, but for the most but look at look at all of the properties that they own. This is a cash buyer, right? Tell me that this is not a cash buyer. They got a total of 24 million in open loan amount. 110 million in total evaluation and a portfolio equity of 86 million dollars. That's a that's a buyer that you want to have on your list because they're obviously buying properties. They're obviously buying properties, right? And then look at these lists of, of ownership. Let's go. Let's see. They've owned some for as long as 24 years and as recent as. Let's go through here. Look at this. These are new. These are new purchases in South Carolina. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. I can keep on going. Look at this, y'all. These are all properties that they bought in the last month. These are all just the last month. And then we get into one month. So they're buying full portfolios of properties. You find a property, these guys are buying it right that's a good sign that's a good sign all right let's get out of here let's go look at another one see about this one what about this one? Oh, same people same people okay they must have bought up the block okay let's look at this one let's see public record back in September so about a year ago they bought it for 20,000 It's worth 81,000 now let's see what they did to it now for me and for my investment group we like it we're gonna like seeing this because the fact that they purchased that property for 20,000 that's that's definitely around the price point that we're looking to be in you know somewhere under the 50,000 uh, price point to purchase our first uh, investment property. So we're definitely gonna, it's starting to look a little bit better, you know? And again, this isn't Columbia proper. This isn't the city of Columbia, but it is definitely on the outside of Columbia. And I see a lot of, uh, a lot of promise. Let's see how many they own. They own 15 different properties. Uh, okay, some with loans, some without loans. Uh, most of what they own is within the last three years, so they're fairly new investors. But hey, look at them—they've been—they've been purchasing all throughout South Carolina. These, I think, are all Richland, and yeah, these are all South Carolina uh, addresses. So let's go look at some of the other stuff they purchased. Actually, let's see. Look at some of their more recent purchases and see. Uh, you know, I—I I, I really do believe in following what other people are doing, following what they what the. Uh, successful investors are already doing so why not go and peep out what oh that's the one we're already looking at huh why not go and peep out what they got going on let's see 11 months ago what was this one okay not too shabby small 800 square foot 6,000 square foot lot 
They went in and put some new flooring in, it looked like. Decent little kitchen, which again, not, not super expensive. Uh, wood, lumber is expensive right now, but you can get around that. Uh, decent flooring. I like that they put some backsplash in there, gave it a little bit of a peel. You know, look, small bathroom again, but not bad. Okay. So again, uh, as we get down in here, we can just kind of click on any of these and, okay, they're buying mobile homes. Let's see. I'm curious to see what this mobile home bought them. Well, which, which one was that? That was this one. Open that one up in a new tab. Let's see what this mobile home, what kind of profits they got out of this. Okay, one-stop home service. That's a different name than what was over on the other one. But must be the same people. Bought it again. Bought it for twenty-five thousand back last year. It doesn't give us a um, doesn't give us what is currently value uh, what the current evaluation for it is. But we can see that they're making about one hundred and fifty-five dollar payment on it. Thirty-four thousand. Uh, it's the loan balance, which means that they probably took out some money so that they could uh, do the flip on it. Okay, and the rent. I like that. So the rent is about $1,000, uh, roughly. You could probably get about $1,000 for this mobile home. So that would make that number well worth it. I mean, that is astronomical when you look at the return on, on the ROI on that. You know, they're looking at, what, 400 uh, yeah, 400%. Uh, return on investment uh, when you look at the rental numbers. So that's not bad. Uh, okay, I'm not going to save that. I'm going to go back over here to my other page. So, again, this is just going through and looking at the cash buyers. 74 cash buyers. A lot of these guys are the same cash buyers. We've already saw that because they own. Um, but look at this 78,000 was the sales price on this one, estimated value 131. 2500 was the sales price on this one, estimated value $86,000. let us take a look at that one. Oh, yeah, look at that. Ugly little outside, but somebody recently purchased this. Let's see. Last year, I'm going to move myself out of the way, out of y'all way. Bought it for cash. Okay, this might be our investor, actually, maybe. Yep. Now, when you go through PropStream, you know, it gives you all kinds of information about the property, subdivision. You can get, uh, I think we can get um, school district up in here, uh, tax jurisdiction, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah, school district right here, zoning information. Zoning is important uh, depending on where you're buying it. Like here in Nashville, we love our zoning. We love being able to knock a house down and put two on it. So the zoning really dictates that. And so a lot of times with properties like that, you can get into something that you didn't even know that you put two houses on it. So now the property you bought for as as one build is technically two builds, and now you just doubled your your um, your profitability on that property. Um, and we can go in here and we can look at comps. Let's look at comps for this property. Let's see what the comps are in the area. Okay, pretty good comps too. Like if you get to looking over here at reasonably uh close properties you know we can change this up a little bit i make another video about how to change this up and get a better look but you see uh, by default it gives us one year of, of comps of comparables uh your comparables are how you will be able to tell what the property could potentially sell for and as you can see we got a varying range you know like up from seventeen thousand. like when i see stuff like this seventeen five, that was probably a, a, a wholesale deal Somebody bought it cheap and then they're gonna rent it, uh, fix it up, and maybe either sell it or rent it. Uh, but you know, fifty-five thousand, one hundred and ten thousand, one hundred and thirty thousand. Uh, these aren't bad numbers. 
uh, you know, we will we will go over here and make sure that the square footage was within, you know, a couple of hundred square foot of each other. Uh, same size as far as bedrooms and baths, because you don't want to be comparing a two a two one to a three two. That that just doesn't work. Uh, but as we can see, you know, our average sales based off of these uh, unset parameters is about ninety eight thousand. So on a property that they paid twenty five hundred for, ninety eight thousand is very good. And on top of that, on a property that somebody paid twenty five hundred for, like if I'm the wholesaler on this and I got this for twenty five hundred, you best believe I added ten, maybe even twenty thousand on this, because at twenty two at twenty two five. It is still a good deal when you look at, uh, you know, another 10, 20,000 into it in renovations and you can still get upwards of 80, 86,000, maybe even more in this hot market for this property. You know, and the rent, the rent's looking at 820, 824, which is right in line with that 86,000 uh, purchase price, um, which is really, really good. Again, most investors are looking for at the 1% rule, which means that whatever they purchase, whatever their all in price is. Um, that's how much that 1% of that is, is roughly what they would love to be getting for rent. And if you can get more than that, then, you know, the more the merrier. So this is a good property too. So I'm going to say that, you know, this area for us, uh, so I'm going to take this and I'm actually going to save this. And Hey, you guys, if you guys decide that you want to get into here and look at this same, um, uh, same location, definitely do that. I'm going to write this zip code down. And I'm going to save this search too, um, but I'm going to write it down because this is something that I got, I got to bring up in front of my group. So let's go. This is 29204 South Carolina. All right. And then I'm going to go over here. Now this is, this is just cash buyers, right? So. What I still want to do is go over here and look at this vacant property list. So let's go and look at this vacant property list. Now I want them to actually be vacant. Uh, don't care if they're if they mark them as owner occupied or non owner occupied on this on this particular section because it doesn't really matter. Uh, this really doesn't matter. Uh, but I want vacant properties, you know. So I'm gonna look for vacant properties. So let's kind of go through here and see what we can find. For its vacant property, let's go change that characteristic too. Cause I want to look at single family homes for now. All right, I got about 200 and something like this one. This one to me looks like uh, it was recently rehabbed or something. Look at the MLS data. Yep, it was recently sold. This actually just sold, so it shows vacant, but it's really not vacant. Uh, but that bad boy sold for 145, or the estimated value is about 145,000. It sold for 146,000 this month. So that's a good deal. That's a good deal, especially considering whoever purchased it back in 2013 only paid 74,000 for it, so they don't double their money on it. Um, so yeah, this is a good. This one is a good deal. This was a good deal. 821 square foot for 146,000 dollars, y'all. Okay. Get out of here. Let's go. We want to look at some distressed properties, though. We want some stuff that's ugly, but ugly. With uh, that ain't but ugly, but let's see. Eh, it's close. It ain't but ugly, but it's up there, right? Estimated value ninety one thousand. Uh, it's bigger than some of the other ones we've seen, so I like that. None owner occupied. They say it's vacant. Uh, okay, let's see, MLS data, okay, again, so this year, it, oh, no, see, that's what I like, they tried to sell it for 95000 this year, but it failed, and it set on the market for 123, 143 days, so that means that there's something wrong with the inside of this property if it didn't sell, if the other one sold, and it sold a little bit over the asking price, this one didn't even sell at the asking price, this is a deal that we would love to, I'm going to save that one. Going to make a new group. This is my uh, investment group.
All right, boom. We're going to save that one because I'm going to go take a look at that and we're going to see if maybe they'd be willing to drop that price or do some owner finance on that bad boy. Let's see. Cash sales. This one sold this year, 28000 Estimated value is 32000 I feel like you probably could get a little bit more for this property once it's fixed up. That's in its current condition. It looks like it needs some work for sure. Paint job, new new floors. Okay. Yep, need some work. Need some work definitely. But again, we go and compare this to that other property that sold. Uh I feel like this is probably more of a ninety thousand dollar uh property. And you see right here the comparables for the area is sixty eight thousand. So they bought this at twenty eight thousand. You know, they can afford to put another twenty thousand, be at forty eight thousand, and if they can sell it for around that sixty eight thousand, they're good. The rent is saying seven hundred and thirty seven uh dollars a month which means that um when i look at this i'm looking at you know seventy three seventy five thousand dollars on the sale price on this property especially if i can get it rented if i can get it rented out you know before it's sold or if the investor can get it rented out before it sells uh i'm not going to add this to our list because it was just purchased uh but i like this property show more promise and this is kind of what we do, you know, like, um, let me, let me minimize this again. This is kind of how we, how we go through and we look at, at our, at our investments, right? Now, like I said, in step, part four of this, you know, who's buying and why, right? Is, is it a vacation area? Uh, you can go on list source. Uh, I'm not going to go over list source today. Uh, but if you want, well, you know what, let me go and type in list source. Use my uh my bad spelling. So list source is another place you can go to pull um uh, information, market research. Uh let's see, I'm gonna maximize this again. Where is it? Discover search property, generate new target prospect. So in list source, they have a lot of data that we can access for free, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to sign in right now. But you can come over to list source. List source allows you to, the opportunity to build this as well, right? Uh, you'll go up, come up in here. Where is South Carolina? Is it even, I guess they don't have data for South Carolina then, huh? Yep. So, list source is out of the book for South Carolina, but if it was any other state, you know, you can come in here, you put in the states. Let's go with Tennessee real quick. Let's go find Nashville. Nashville, we're going to add Nashville. So you can see they got 180,000 uh, addresses up in here for Nashville. And we can go through and we can kind of uh, break this bad boy out by foreclosures, demographics, um, whether or not they have a mortgage, first, second mortgage, junior mortgage, meaning like a, a second mortgage. Um, and we can pull a list through list source. I don't use list source anymore. We don't use it like that. Uh, we used to back in the day. Uh, but right now we really... we spend all our time right here on PropStream because PropStream gives us so much information when it get to digging around inside of the properties. Like y'all can see, I can see like pictures of the property. I can see current conditions of the property. I mean, like, look at this. This is a good deal. Looks like it at least. Estimated value, 73,000. 2,000 square foot. So it's probably worth a little bit more than that. This is the biggest one we've seen so far. Somebody's owned it for two years. It's still vacant. Corporate owned. So maybe they're still working on fixing it. Metropolitan Investment Group. Uh, here, here go our address for them. So if we wanted to, we could go ahead and write them. Uh, they bought this in 2019 for 45,000. They've already, they're already up if the estimate is is accurate, which I'm pretty sure it needs some work. And at this 1,700 rental rate, 
again, like now I'm looking at this like a hundred and oh, and look, 155,000. That right there always is closer to the actual price of what you're going to get for this property once you fix it up. Once you get rid of those ugly floors, you give it a paint job, new roof, them railings can go, you know, um, and just spruce it up. I mean, it needs an update. It needs a big update. You know, that's that's for sure. I like that it has more than one fireplace. That's kind of cool and weird at the same time. I'm not sure what's up with this little bitty door. That probably had to have to be fixed. You know, um, definitely need some work in this bathroom. I wonder if they're putting a GFCI up in there. Get electrocuted. Okay, radiators. Uh, so that means that this that it may not have central AC and heating. Don't know if this is one of those areas where it may not be needed, but that's definitely something you will want to look into because most people are going to want that that comfort of having central AC and heating. Uh, but who knows? But the thing that I like about this property is that they purchased this property for forty five thousand, and if they even if they put another forty five thousand into it, if they can sell it for that one fifty five, they're going to make a killing on this. I don't know why they're holding on to it, but hey, I'm going to save that to our list too. Because I have no problem reaching out to these people and seeing what's up with that property. Y'all can see I got all kinds of lists in here. These are all lists that we've uh, pulled in the past. Some are dated, some are not. These are just, just stuff that we've, we've put up in the past. So, And properties that we're currently working on. All right. So I guess, let's see. We've, we've done this zip code. I'm going to save that search. I like to try to give everything a unique name so that when I come back, I don't have to be guessing what it is. Um, I'm gonna call this prospect this, I guess. Uh, list of properties to look at for investment group. And new wholesale deals. Include home. Don't want to put that. Don't want to. Re this is just asking if I want to have it come up here, which I don't. Um, and I want to know when new prospects become available. And that's the other thing that I like about this, because once I save this search, anytime something new pops up on this vacant list for this zip code, they're going to send it to me. Oh, you know, and I want to put vacant on there. I do want to put on there that this is a vacant list because. Uh, I'm going to also go back and pull another list for this zip code that won't be a vacant list. I'm going to actually pull one of these hot equity lists. I like the vacant list to be separate because vacant, vacant properties are easy to negotiate on. So you always want to start with the low hanging fruit. These are low hanging fruit because no one's living in them currently. Uh, so we're going to hit those up first, but then we're going to actually go back and we'll look at this hot equity list because there are going to be properties on that hot equity list, with, but that means that someone purchased it. They paid off their mortgage or they've almost paid off their mortgage or the property just has appreciated so much that they now have high equity in it. So they bought it for forty thousand dollars ten years ago. But now the neighborhood is worth one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That that makes them a high equity uh, property, even if they haven't paid off much of the of the loan. They can still owe thirty five thousand on it, but they still consider high equity because of the neighborhood that they're in. This one right here was kind of standing out to me. I don't know why I don't like that brick at all. It looks so dark. Uh, this house here, uh, but again, it says it's vacant, 94,000, uh, 1,400 square foot, I like that, whoever owns it lives in Texas, so that means that there's an absentee owner, so we like that as well, uh, so definitely save that one. All right, now y'all see how easy it is to kind of get in here and start coming up and start building you a list. Now, if you don't have access to prop screen, 
And you may be wondering, how can I do this same thing without having access to Pro Screen? Well, let me go ahead and show you. We're going to go over here to Google Earth. going to pull up Google Earth. Oh, hold on, note. Let's go to Google Earth. Copy that. Let that bad boy load up real quick. Technology is at our hands, people. Like, if you don't learn how to use the technology that you have uh, at your disposal, um, you're missing out. You know, you can sit here when you get off work for a couple of hours, come to come up with a couple of different properties that you want to look at. And here's the crazy thing about Google Earth, right? Now, Google Earth doesn't give you the, the ability to, you know, skip trace the owner. Like, the thing I like about PropStream is literally, once I've gotten my list together, I go over here. Uh, let's see. Don't y'all be looking at my, uh, where is it at? There's my property. Marketing list. So once I get these properties, I can literally go up in here, go to actions. I can export them to CV to uh, CSV file. Uh, I can go into skip tracing uh, for twelve cent per per lead. Uh, I can just go up in here. I'll find my group here. I'll add these three. If I had 15, 20, 30, I can add them all in here. Hit next. Got my three. Hit next. Uh, go up in here and then I can skip trace them. For 24 cents, I can get these three phone numbers and call these people right now if I wanted to. Um, but I don't want to right now. I'm going to get out of that. And we're going to go back over here to Google Earth. Now, Google Earth, you can't do that. You can't just go in and skip trace them and get the phone numbers right then and there. Um, but what you can do is you can make a project, right? So we're going to make a new project. We're going to call this again. No stress. Yep. Uh, we're going to call this VD4D. That's virtual drive for dollars. Uh, and you can fill out the rest of this stuff. I'm not going to worry about that right now. But boom, now we got a new project, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to, we're just going to go into this neighborhood. Let's see, let's close this down. And let's zoom in. Now, if you don't know where to start, you can easily go and let's go to Zulo.com. Put our zip code in. What is that? Two nine two zero four. All right. And now we can see what's for sale, right? So we got this one right here, Barkley Drive. So let's go ahead and let's go to Barkley Drive. Copy that address, go back over to Google Earth. And let's go back and search again. Let's put this address in. Boom. This is where we're going to start our search from. We literally went over, we randomly found a, a property that is selling right now on Zillow. 215000 is what they are trying to sell this for. Uh, so pretty good neighborhood, right? Decent little rehab they've done on it. I like the way they look. That's actually a really good rehab they've done on it. So uh, we're going to go in here and we're going to get all up in this. Hold on. Double click on that bad boy. Get up in there. Let's get close. Come on. Get me up in there. Let me move myself out of the way. 
And I'm going to take this little person right here. I'm going to drop him on the street. And we're going to go and we're going to look. Is this that property? Yep, I think it is. Yep, so that's the property right there. That was before it got rehabbed. Um, which makes sense. This this rehab probably just recently happened. Let's see how long this has been on the market for. And actually, I want to go look this property up on PropStream too. So let's do both. We're gonna do a side by side comparison. Let's see. Okay, look at that. Two hundred and twenty is what PropStream is saying, which is about on average with what they're selling for. Uh, the MLS data has been on the market for 20 days and it's actually got a, uh, a contingent buyer. So that's a good sign. They bought it back in March for 125,000. Uh, let's say that they've put, even if they put 50,000 in it, if they get back that, that 200,000 uh, that they want at 215 that they want or higher, they're going to, they're going to make a killing on this, on this bad boy. They're gonna make a killing. Look at that, fifteen hundred for rent, and it, that could be a little bit more. Actually, who knows? Let's see. Link properties. They got two, both of them three and six months. So these are both properties that they are recently purchased. So these people could be a good buyer because they're gonna sell this property and they're gonna need a new property to get into. Uh, but let's go back over to Google Earth. Okay. So what we do from here? Now that we found an area that obviously there's flips going on because somebody's just flipped that house. You're just going to look around the neighborhood. You're going to virtually drive for dollars in this neighborhood, right? Go on down the street. And just keep on looking. Like, look at that. Look at that roof. Let's see. Let's see if we want to add this one to our list. So what we'll do is go here, I think. Nope. Where do we go to add it to our list? Give me a minute, y'all. Yep, projects. So we're gonna go back to here. Got it. We're gonna add it to our project. Oh, okay, I didn't make the project right, huh? No. Alright. Save that. So now we got this property in our virtual drive for dollar list, right? And then we're going to just go back, drop our little person back down there again. But that was the wrong property ad address, but let's go to the one that we wanted. We're just talking about this one. All right, this is acting up on me. Come on now. Get back down up in here. I look person back over here and get back down on the street. Bear with me. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. We're going to get it, get it, get it. That's why the kids normally do this. We normally have our kids do this part of the work. Uh, uh, I don't want to fight on my location.
give me a second. We're going to figure this out. All right. So for some reason, I am having a hard time getting this bad boy to do what I wanted to do. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right. Um, what was this? This is. 1509. Okay, let's go back over here and see our project again. Back over here. Let's see. Oh, this one is actually for sale. Look at that. This is fifteen sixteen. All right, look, this ain't working out for me right now, but my goal was to show you guys how you can get into Google Earth. I had to make a whole nother video for this apparently because it's not wanting to work for me right now. But ideally what you do is you get in here, you can build your list and then you will go over here to your projects and you can find your project in here and then uh, go back and view the properties that you looked at. So not sure why it's acting up on me now but it is. Fifteen oh nine. What is this? Barkley or something like that. What is the name of this right here? Or Bradley. All right, so we will save it, right? back out and now you can see we got now you can see we got both of these on our driving for dollars list so then we just go back we drop our little person back down here again now maybe it's because i'm going into the street view and it doesn't like me doing that from the street view for some reason now we used to be able to do that so um what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna i want to see this one I like this one. Like this one looks like it needs some work and obviously someone was trying to sell it at some point. See if we can zoom in and see that sign. Yep. You can see the sign if you wanted to call them. Just boom, right there. So, again, I guess we could, let's go. How do we make a new placeholder? We go over here to feature. Oh, nope, nope, nope. I want to do that. Come back in. Go back down there. Yeah, I know I'm making this seem a lot harder than what it is, but trust and believe me, when you're looking at $10,000 for wholesaling this property, whatever it takes for you to get this property on your list, you're going to do it. Okay. What's this 22 15 22 let's see let's zoom out a little bit let's see if it gives us the Let's 
I got 15.2 Bradley. All right, so once we get our list in here, uh, we can easily go up in here and export our list out, right? Um, we can go ahead and we can edit it, we can pin it, all of that other stuff. But I, the thing that we would want to do is we would go in here, we would export it. And once you export it, then you can take it over to uh, one of the different skip tracing sites. You can even take this back and upload it into prop screen. They do have an option for you to go back and upload properties into prop screen. So like a lot of times the kids, when they go out and they do driving for dollars, um, we'll take their list and we'll add their list back in the prop screen. As you can see over here, let me see, I got, we got some properties over here that got some over here that the kids have done. Get rid of that. Yeah, I don't see them right now. I'm not going to worry about it. But I think that this video the, uh, serves its purpose uh, of showing you guys pretty much how I look at a new area, right? So just based off of what I've looked at so far in this Columbia area, um, I'm liking Forest Acres. Uh, and like I said, I can go back over here. I can go back over here to yeah once I get over here to the nearby cities I still have all of these other cities that I can go and look through and see if I can find some more deals so I'm, I'm very pleased with this city right now uh, despite the crime rate being a little bit high but I mean the crime rates high everywhere right now people at home and going crazy so I'm not too worried about that the one thing that I truly love about this, this neighborhood is that there are renovations going, there are properties selling, uh, and that is what we care about the most in our wholesale business, right? I like that there's 1,500 cash buyers in this area, and then if I just go and type in Columbia, I probably will get way more than that. Boom, 19,000 cash buyers. So. 2,957 vacant properties, 87,000 high equity properties, uh, and that's without any filtering, of course, but in the grand scheme of things, this is 19,000 people that we could sell our potential uh, wholesale deals to, uh, 19,000 people that we could potentially sell our rehabs and flips to. Uh, home buyers aren't the only people who buy flip properties. Uh, landlords buy flip properties all the time. Many landlords are just landlords. They don't like to go out and do work. They don't like to fix properties. They just like to buy them and rent them. Uh, so this has a lot of potential in it because there's 19,000 people that you can reach out to and there's almost 3,000 vacant properties. And this list is not accurate, uh, does not accurately depict how many are truly in the area. There's 1,300 properties on the MLS right now. Uh, which is also a good thing because that means that properties are being listed. Uh, it's an active market. Uh, you can see we can go down through here and we can see all of the different active properties, which that gives us a, the ability to go in and kind of get an idea of what people are trying to sell for as well. So that's also a plus. Um, I'm going to cut this video here. Uh, if you have any questions about anything that I covered in this video or if there's anything that you feel like I may have missed or skipped over, in this video, I definitely want you to reach out to me, uh, drop a comment in the comment section. Uh, I'm going to continue my search uh, and put some more properties on my list. I don't want to give you guys all of the properties that we're going to be reaching out to because uh, then I'd be creating unnecessary uh, competition for myself. But I do implore you to get out and, and search for yourself. Use one of these means that I, that I just showed you, whether that be getting onto here with Google Earth. You can do that for free. Uh, to at least get started, get to driving around in the neighborhood virtually. If you live in the area that's similar to this, or if you live in this area, get out and drive around, add them to your list. You can do the same thing. You can use Google Maps, I think. Uh, my wife was, was showing me the other day that you can make a list in Google Maps and export it, uh, share it. You can share it with between uh, team members. If you have other team members you're going to be working with, other wholesalers, uh, reach out to some wholesalers. Uh, you'd be surprised what you can find there. You can literally go up in here pull a, a cash buyers list, 
skip trace that cash buyers list, figure out what they're looking for, and then reach out to other wholesalers and see what they have available and, and, and just match them up and, and, and uh, get a split on the deal. So there's so many different ways you can go about getting your first and next deal when it comes down to wholesaling properties. Um, and remember that the main goal here is wealth generation. The main goal is to escape the rat race. If you haven't read uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I, I think you should. But if the goal is to escape the rat race, to not have to get up and go into a nine to five job, uh, this is the this is definitely one way that you can do it. Um, we found great success in it. Uh, Vani and I both are at home most of our most of the day. The kids are in virtual school now, so they're home now. And especially with the pandemic going on, it's just been great. It's been uh, a blessing in the, in disguise, you know, from where we were before, you know, to where we are now. And I, we just want to share that with you guys. So definitely get in there. Uh, if you need some more information on Prop Screen, I'll leave a link down in the description. You can get seven days of Prop Screen for free. Seven to 14 days. I think it's seven days. Um, but that's enough time for you to get in here and pull a buyer's list. You literally can go up in here, narrow it down, like I said. You want none owner-occupied. Pick people who own property types that you're looking to wholesale. Um And boom, look at that, 7,500 cash buyers right now that I could very well select this, add to a list. Uh, I'm not going to add it to a list, but you could you could pick this, add it to a list, skip trace it, and just start calling, emailing, texting, whatever means of communication you want to do to reach out to these people. Now, if you're afraid to reach out to people, make sure you come back and check out my one of, our, the, one of the next videos where... After I finish pulling my list, I'm going to go come back and I'm going to show you guys. Well, next time I'm going to show you guys my my uh, skip tracing my cash buyer list and skip tracing um, the prospective uh, sellers. Again, I, I don't believe that motivated sellers are people who reach out to you. I'm going to be reaching out to property owners, seeing if they're interested in selling their properties. I'm going to start with this vacant list and then I'm going to move over to the high equity list uh, because that's my... That's the way I like to do things. I like to get the low-hanging fruit first, and then I go back for the more difficult uh, uh, jobs. If you are a pre-foreclosure or foreclosure person, here you go, 263. Look, the eviction moratorium is up, so there's going to be a lot of moving parts going on right now. So you want to make sure that you're positioning yourself to capitalize on whatever it is that's coming down range. Uh, and the best way to do that is to start now. Don't wait. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till next week. As soon as you see this video... I want you to go ahead and just start doing it. Like, put me on the side screen, pull up Google Earth, and just start driving down streets. I don't care what city it's in. Just pick one. Pick a city, drive down the street, add some properties. When you hit 25 properties, stop, skip, trace it, call them. Boom. There you go. If that, then when those 25 are done being called, you put them on follow up and you do the next 25. And you do the next 50. And you do the next 100. And before you know it, you got a VA who's doing all the hard stuff for you and you just collecting mailbox money, hopefully. Um, don't worry about the, the, the details of how you close the deal, the virtual closing and all that other stuff. We can help you with that. Um, just reach out to us. You find a deal, you don't know what to do next, reach out to us. We'd love to help you. Uh, and we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear your story. So make sure that you like, share this video and just come back for more. All right.